Broncos country, what's going on? Hope you guys are having a wonderful July 5th, July 4th weekend. Going to give you guys a complete breakdown, position by position, of our cap spending for this year and where the Broncos might look to allocate future funds and opened up cap space as soon as this spring. Y'all be sure to let me know where you would want to see the Broncos spend money at next offseason. Like and subscribe as always, and check out my video. I did a film room on Chris Abrams' train yesterday. I will be sure to link that in the description and comments as well. But let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I love a lot of what is going on with the Broncos in terms of after the Russell Wilson cap hit is off the books. You know, we got a little over 30 million, I believe, next year. But you can see our quarterback room right now opens up with uh, Bo Nix being the only one under contract for next year at 4.2 million. I would love to see Jarrett Stidham and Zach Wilson stay within uh, the, the group long term. Hopefully, we can keep them. Uh, under contract for cheap, but there's some there are people that quarterbacks rather that I feel like we should be able to afford if we want to bring both of them back. Now, this is where I really love where our running back room is shaping up for the future because our biggest contracts over seven million dollars. Samaj P. Ryan, Javante Williams are free agents next year. This is going to leave us a backfield of Julio McLaughlin, Audra Gestime, and Blake Watson, which I feel like should be and it's our hope that they are our main three running backs in 2025 maybe we bring in another veteran or draft somebody else to support them but in terms of positional spending i want to keep the running back room always low i would rather the broncos draft a running back every year and just continue to cycle those guys out um, after their rookie contracts are expired Sadly, the same case is what I'm advocating for for Javante Williams. But you see next year, we just have about $3 million allocated to the room. Uh, that would be phenomenal if we can still keep it around that number, three, four, maybe $5 million. Now, in 2025, this is really interesting because Cortland Sutton, you see, is on the books for 17.8, but all, none of this is guaranteed. It's likely that we see him not on the team next year. Almost $18 million opened up without him on the roster. Another $7 million freed up with Tim Patrick gone. And you can see we have a handful of guys like Phil Dorsett, Will Jordan Humphrey, Brand Johnson, Jalen Virgil. A bunch of these guys uh, aren't on contract past this year. Maybe we bring some of them back. But overall, we should have a lot of room to go and bring in a big time wide receiver. For instance, if we go after T. Higgins, right? That's somebody that I advocated for. We should have the salary room to do that. However, what I'm wondering is with Garrett Bowles' contract expiring, I feel like we can only do one of those things go after another big time left tackle or extend Garrett Bowles or sign a big-time wide receiver. Depends on where we end up in the draft order for this next year, but I think how I would prefer this to go is let's extend Garrett Bowles if we had to choose, and maybe we can find another bargain wide receiver. But uh, kind of changing my tune a little bit there. I wouldn't hate it if the Broncos traded for T. Higgins, but how I'm looking at this offensive line with both Garrett Bowles and um, Quinn Miners, rather, both being off the books. It's going to require a lot of money to bring both of them back, and that's an interesting option. Tight end, you can see we got some continuity here for the next while with Adam Troutman, Greg Dulcich, Lucas Kroll. He will be back as a restricted free agent. Thomas Yasmin is also under contract. We'll have to see what happens with Greg Dulcich. Uh, they could definitely cut him uh, this year <laughs> and next year. I would love for us to bring in another tight end, but Lucas Kroll, I think we're hoping, is going to be that tight end one for us, if not this year in 2025. Now, this is where things get interesting. We have a ton of offensive linemen. Got to imagine we're going to cut some of these guys. Not thrilled about Matt Pert uh, being on the roster, but maybe somebody like Alec, uh, 
Pilcheski or Frank Crum can step up for us as that swing tackle. But you see Mike McGlinchey, Garrett Bowles under contract for us at huge numbers. Quinn Miners is going to get probably a 17 to $20 million raise in 2025. And so that really makes it tough to maintain both him and Garrett Bowles on the roster. I'm not really sure what Garrett Bowles will be commanding. I imagine he'll want a three or four year uh, contract contract extension at the minimum. This will be his last big payday he can cash in at. So we'll just have to see. I would love to see the Broncos extend him if it's at an affordable rate. And maybe you only guarantee the first two, three years partially of that of that contract with having later on some uh, some years to where you can cut him and it's non-guaranteed. But uh, overall, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, roster space opening up, but it's going to be expensive to keep both of these guys, and that's something to consider as we also look to have part of our defensive line uh, opening up as well. DJ Jones is a free agent after this year. Jonathan Cooper is also a free agent. Thankfully, we have Malcolm Roach under contract for another year. Hopefully, Awazarike is uh, reinstated here very soon. Zach Allen, uh, in a couple of years, you'll see that he's not on the roster, but we have some void years to where we're handling some of his cap hit, pushing it down to future years. But uh, Jonah Ellis, Matt Henningsen, John Franklin Myers, uh, these are guys that uh, we should get multiple years out of. It would be nice with DJ Jones leaving if we can bring in another nice uh, piece on the defensive line that is a little bit more high end. But again, positional spending, we're going to have to, I think we need to focus first on the offensive line, making sure that that is shored up for Bo Nix. And then everything after that uh, can then be prioritized. Now with linebacker, this is interesting. As you know, Baron Browning's a free agent after this year. Cody Barton's going to be gone. Alex Singleton under contract for two more years. Not a lot of long-term pieces here for the Broncos past two years. Uh, Nick Benino, more of an edge guy, but he's going to be a free agent here in a couple of years. Maybe he's extended. Drew Sanders, who knows what's going to happen with him. A lot of uncertainty at this linebacker group, uh, particularly the inside linebackers outside of Alex Singleton. Hopefully we can have somebody that establishes themselves as a full-time starter. I think most likely that it's Cody Barton in terms of the inside linebackers. Uh, secondary, this is also interesting. You talk about positional spending. Patrick Sertan is a little bit of a luxury, but at the end of the day, you don't want to give him up. Free agent in 2026, you imagine he's going to be signing a contract extension here soon. That's going to make him probably the highest paid cornerback in football. That's something else to consider past 2025. How much more are we going to spend on Pat Sertan on the cornerback room? I'm fine spending on this if our front seven is in a good position. You see, we got a lot of corners and safeties uh, under contract for this next couple or for the next couple seasons. But then after that, it frees up. Now, Will Lutz under contract for two years. Riley Dixon's a free agent after this year. Uh, some of these numbers I feel like are a little weird, but because I'm not really sure how we have negative $27 million in cap space because we have $6 million uh, in top 51 space right now. But anyways, right now we're projected, before you take away the guys that can be cut with non-guaranteed contracts, such as Cortland Sutton, we have $51 million. You've probably seen articles or seen tweets that we're able to, to get that number well over $100 million based on um, so, some different things. So we're going to have a lot of money to spend next year, but priorities, I mean, if you're thinking about Quinn Miners, Pat Sertan, Garrett Bowles, um, well, I guess Pat Sertan has a couple more years left, but Quinn Miners, Garrett Bowles, that's probably 40 to $50 million right there for those two players if you decide to keep them. Or if it's Quinn Miners and you're bringing in a big time wide receiver, another forty to fifty million dollars or so. So that's something to to consider. 
if you had to choose two out of the three, what would you want to do? I would want to keep Quinn Miners. And I, can't, I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. Part of me wants to keep Garrett Bowles. Uh, I wouldn't prefer to have a rookie tie, or long, eh, long tackle, left tackle starting for us in 2025. But if that's what it comes down to and we're going to get adequate play, let's go for it. A little unsure of what the draft ca- class looks like so far, but you can see, like, I would love to keep our running back room, um, the positional spending low. I'm not really sure. Maybe they just factor in Javante Williams and some of these other guys because our running back room should be around $3 million currently. But overall, I feel like we're in a good position to – build a better and better team around Bo Nix as he develops. And that's that's really the key. Um, but y'all let me know your thoughts. Uh, what position groups would you like to see the Bron- Broncos uh, keep low positional spending at? Where do you feel like uh, we should be spending more money? Please let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you guys again. I will be back tomorrow. And as always, y'all, go Broncos.